going on to the New Testament. We're going to read from the books, the book of the Acts of the Apostles. We're going to read from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9 and verse 1. We're going to read now from the New Testament, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verse 1. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him, for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found any who any there who belonged to the way whether men or women he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem as he neared Damascus on his journey suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him he fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him so so why do you persecute me who are you Lord he asked I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could not see anything. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. Then the Lord told him, Go to the house of Judah on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on this name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Christ. After many days had gone by, the Jews conspired to kill him, but Saul learned of their plan. Day and night they kept close watch on the city gates in order to kill him, but his followers took him by night and lowered him in a basket through an opening in the wall, I mean. A completely different person now. A person who is confirming that he is a persecutor, a blasphemer of the name of Jesus, unlike Ahaz. But he says that I was blessed because, and I was forgiven because I did what I didn't know. I was acting in a way that I wasn't 
completely understanding. But the love and the grace of God overflowed in me. And the word is faithful and it's worthy of acceptance. And that word is that, the, that Christ came to the world to save the sinners. And first of these sinners, it is I. And Apostle Paul used to be that persecutor of the church, first of all sinners, as he confirms. And he himself, on one hand, when Stephanus was stoned to death, he was approving of his death. He was holding the garments of the ones who were casting the stones. But also he was raining havoc, havoc and murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He would put them into prison and he would execute them. A unique person, charismatic even, among the Jews. He was educated. He was educated by, uh, by Gamaliel and he knew very well the law of Moses. And he was confirming himself and he was subduing himself into that law. However, the law of Moses is confirming the sin that exists between people, amongst people rather. But he, that law is not confirming the salvation of God. And zealous on one hand, but not knowing what the reality is on the other. And that had the result. Very important one indeed. Christ knows him very well. And this is the message of the New Testament now. The Lord knows you very well. People do not know you. People cannot understand you. They and we don't know what you have in your heart. What is happening in your spirit. The way you are living in this world where no one is seeing you. Your desires, your ambitions. We do not know about it. And even if we come, if we understand a couple of things, we probably are mistaken. That is why we should never pass judgment because the Lord says that if you pass judgment, you yourself will be judged. Never um, put someone uh, into, uh, uh, bring them into a corner and judge me harshly because you yourself are going to be judged that way. Because whatever you do is wrong if you are doing so because your heart said so. Because your path is from your understanding, your, your carnal ways. And if it is a mistake, that will be a mistake, if it's not from directed from the Spirit, then the results are going to be destructive. That is why you should never, ever, in your household, yourself, your church, your professional place, do not try to, to make people uh, do what you say. Because that is not the law of God, that's your law. When you say that you will do what I say, you hear that my son, my daughter, my uh, husband, my wife, you will do as I say. Know that at that instance, you are becoming an enemy of God. You are becoming an enemy and an opposing, uh, an opposing enemy of God. Because the desire of your eyes the desire of your mind and your flesh are guiding you to say these words. But God is a God of peace. He's a God of freedom. And He now is now giving us His law. That is the perfect law of freedom. And He says to you, do as you please. Do as you want, but be careful. What you will do, whatever you like or think, are going to be a mistake. Come to me instead if you want, and I'm going to lead you. And you will be able to do not what is right, but also what is blessed and ple pleasant, pleasing rather to the eyes of God. And you're going to have a fruition. You're going to have fruit, and that fruit is going to remain. That fruit will remain rather.
pray. Do not be obedient to people, but study the Word of God. Be obedient to what the Word of God has to say for you. A different life the Word of God is suggesting for us. And what the Word of God is confirming is what will be done violently unto Saul. Because he was a persecutor of the church, a blasphemer. God saw his heart. No one else was able to see what was inside the heart of Saul. No one, Peter, John, none of the Christians, no one of the... Non, no one knew what was in the heart of Saul. Do not think that you know the hearts of your brothers and people. The only one who knows the heart of people is the Almighty God. That is why you shouldn't pass judgment. Do not say that nothing can happen with this person. Was there a chance for anyone to believe that Apostle Paul used, is a unique vessel of God and he used to be called Saul and he was a persecutor of the church and he did what he did? That is why you shouldn't be seeing at what the, in, the, the stance of some people is. Because you don't know what God is about to do. Let me say this again. Do not be disappointed. Because of the predicament of some people, regardless of how much you love them. Pray instead. Do not be afraid. Because your prayer has a priesthood ability and power. A priest-like ability. Because you have the authority of a king. And like a priest, you can intercede. And you can bound the enemy. And he will be in, in shackles because of your prayer. Is it possible for the righteously captured to be set free? Do not say it's impossible. Because the Word of God says that it is not impossible. But rather, it says that the Lord is going to bind the enemy. And He will set them free. The message of the gospel is not the, a gospel of, uh, of uh, fear. But it's a gospel of love, of freedom, of hope. Do not look at Ahaz. But rather... Take as an example Christ. Do not see the Old Testament, but see the gospel of Jesus Christ that is the power of God that can save anyone who believes in it. The Old Testament is for our, gospel, for our doctrine. He cannot save. The New Testament is for our saving. Jesus Christ is. His name is. And I'm going to repeat this today because the message, it is terrifying today. It is a message of hope. Sure and secure. Because if you are not afraid, if you believe, if you are praying, if you exalt God, if you are praying to God, nothing is impossible to Him. And nothing is impossible to the one who believes in Him. I'm going to say this again. Nothing is impossible to the one who believes in God. Do you believe? Do you truly believe that whatever you ask God for, He will do it? This is the gospel of God. This is the gospel of Christ. He is able to save the believers, the one who believes in His name. Whatever you ask in my name's sake, God, my Father, is going to give to you so that you may have a full joy in Him. I'm not saying this. These are not my words. Jesus is saying these things to us. And we believe in Jesus. Let us not lose hope. Let us not be disappointed or aggravated or in fear. Because God is alive and our soul is alive. Blessed be the name of God. Who could believe that Saul, the persecutor of the church, the blasphemer, was predestined and foreknown to be a vessel of good use? so that he can send him on a mission to the Gentiles. Who amongst the Israelites could believe that? Who amongst them, whom can, who would believe it? 
but we do. I mean to the name of God. We believe it, don't we? I mean to the name of God. That is why he was coming down to Damascus, still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples, says in verse 1. He is now starting with authority from the priests to besiege, to, to rather take as prisoners the believers of Jerusalem. That was the plan to Damascus rather and the people the believers in Damascus learned about this and they were terrified but God has different plans he got he has good plans let me say this again God has good plans for all of us for you and I because you were added to the church he has good plans for you because today you came to the church, not by your own volition, but because God brought you into the church. Do you believe that? Do not lose that opportunity. Do not miss out on it. And I'm going to say this again. I'm going to read what he said to Ahaz. If you don't believe, you won't be found. You won't be strengthened. And for, and for them to be able to believe... He says, ask for a sign. Whatever you ask for, I'm going to do it so that I can help you believe in the name of God. But Ahaz, he was afraid. He was terrified. He said, I don't want to test my God. A heart of unfaithfulness, isn't it? But today, this is what God showed me today. Let us look to the left and to the right of us in our lives and see. Or the dark places all the dark pe the, pe the dark faces of people that we see and pray for them and li listen to what God said let there be light pray that pray in that way and it will be done the earth was in darkness at the beginning and the voice of God was heard let there be light and there was light and he said the same thing to Saul. Saul, so why are you persecuting me? He was on the ground. He was blind. But he had a good question. Lord, who are you? The one that I am persecuting. I'm persecuting the ones that are of the way. The heretics. But the word of God, the God replied, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goats. And the nicest question that I want us to also pose as well. Lord, what would you like me to do? What do you want me to do? Please say this to, to your Lord today. From within your heart. You don't need to shout it out. Say, Lord, what do you want me to do? What would you like me to do? And the Lord said, go to Damascus. And I'm going to tell you what you need to do, what you must do in verse 6. And he stayed there for three days without eating or drinking anything. And he sees a vision, someone called Ananias. He doesn't know him. And he says that I'm, that, that person is going to come because I'm going to tell him that I met you on the way and I'm sending him to you so that he can pray for you so that you may regain your vision, be baptized in the Spirit and become my servant. So, becoming a servant of God, the one who's in darkness, free, the ones who are outside the will of God and the presence of God. Can they be saved? But he came for them. He didn't come for the righteous. He came for the sinners. Is he going to become a servant of God? And now he also visits Ananiah. Ananiah, go, there's a soul, a person called Saul in this, in straight, on Straight Street. Go to him and pray for him because he has seen you in his vision. So you may pray and his sight can be restored. And Ananiah replied, Lord, you don't know things very well, it seems. He has slaughtered many people. But God replies, go, because he is my chosen instrument, he says in verse 15, to carry my name before the Gentiles. And now Ananias is convinced 
someone called Ananias. We don't know about him. Saul doesn't know about him. He enters now and he sees that beast, uh, that great man that was called Saul. And he was now kneeling down and praying. He was amazed, wasn't he? Imagine that now. Seeing the one, that person, that is in darkness now, kneeling down and praying to God. Is he the one? Is he kneeling down praying to God? That aggravated person, that sinner. Worthless. You're going to see them though, praying to God. Kneeling down and praying. Blessed be the name of God. And this is the gospel of God. This is the promise of God. This is the gospel of the latter days. This is the message of God because the mountain of God will be lifted up higher than any other mountain. And it will be clear to see for all peoples. And the nations, people, are going to move forward, stream in Jerusalem. Stream towards the house of God. They're going to stream towards the, the church of God. And they're going to ask, please teach us, Lord, the right way that we need to follow. Because through Zion, the word of God will come. Through Jer Jerusalem, salvation will come. From the church of God, of the living God, the new Jerusalem, the city of our festivities, the salvation is going to come to our nation. Blessed be the name of God. That is why the gospel of God is the gospel of hope. It's not a gospel of disappointment, a gospel of fear. It's a gospel of glory, the glory of God, a gospel of salvation, a gospel truly that we need to, to believe truly. The things that we will see and we will experience are things that have been programmed and predestined from the beginning of the world and they're amazing things gorgeous thing, blessed things. We're going to see people streaming in, asking for God to teach them. You, God, you, Lord, teach us. And we are going to just see this, uh, th these miracles, and we're going to praise God. So my brother, he says, he prayed unto him, and he, he regained his vision. He was baptized he regained his strength and he became a servant of God. So, he will become a disciple of God. Who? The person who is now in darkness and you pray for him. And you won't believe it. He's, he's going to become a servant of God. The one you, believe, you will pray for. If you believe it. If you don't believe it, nothing will happen. Blessed be the name of God. And immediately... In verse 20 we see he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. But he is not ready. And that is not the Word of God. That is not what God wants him to do. And they, they uh, conspired to kill Saul. But his followers took him out by night and loaded him in a basket through the opening of the wall. He managed to get away. And he went to Arabia for three or four years now. He said, to go. He took him and placed him there. We don't know. But he was alone there. That's all we know. And Christ taught him about the gospel of God. Something that he would need to preach right down so that we can hear, so that we can study and preach to the nations. And for, for three years... He was taught about God, the, that gospel. That is why he says, I'm not teaching you things that I wrote, but what Christ told me about. And I'm going to say this to you as God told me. The gospel that you are preaching, the gospel that is preached, it's not a human gospel. God is teaching you this. God is teaching you and revealing these things to you. Not a person, but God Almighty is re revealing these things to you. You don't need to go to Arabia. You need to come to the church and God is going to teach you His Word in here. And you are going to see the name of the Lord being lifted high in this church. But now, he also needs to learn something else. You need patience so that you may act accordingly to the Word of God, so that you may enjoy the blessings of God and the promises of His. He goes to Jerusalem now. 
and he is ready now with the gospel that he received. Now you are going to be saved. But the Lord says, go away because they're going to kill you. It's not your time yet. Where am I supposed to go? Go to Tarsus. You won't, you're not supposed to do anything there. Just wait. And today, we, the gospel of God is full of message for us. Wait. Wait for what? Wait for the Lord. Do not do anything. Just go to Tarsus and wait. With patience. See what the Lord is going to do for you. Do you believe that? Wait. Four years went by in Tarsus. He didn't move a step. He understood what he was supposed to do and that was wait. And all of a sudden, Barnabas appears and says, Now come to Antioch because we need you. And when you hear someone say, come, we need you, know that the Lord is inviting you. No people. And he went to Antioch. And he stayed there for one year. And then he went to Jerusalem. And the first gathering uh, would be made there. And Apostle Paul says that 14 years ago, I met Peter. And I went to James. And I brought to them the gospel that I'm preaching so that I may so that I may be confirmed if I'm making a mistake but he's trusting the Lord he's not trusting himself and when I when they heard about the gospel of apostle Paul they said go apostle Paul said that the Lord is sending me to to the nations because Peter was sent to, to the circumcised, to the Jews. And a unique word, uh, work of, uh, through Apostle Paul was made. And I was reading through it today. And I just want to read through it with you now. A servant of God, and in many afflictions, I've been into prisons, he says, death, the fear of death, the threats rather of death, from Jews. They afflicted me. His life was not in joy. He was in blessing, even though he was afflicted. And he was in sorrow all the days of his life. But we need to enter into eternal life through the narrow gate. Because the, the gate is narrow and the road is through sorrows, but it will lead to eternal life. Do not wait for the joy of this world, but wait for the blessing of God. This is the life of a Christian. The blessing of heavens. And it's coming. It's coming quickly. You need to prepare to meet your Lord. Amen.